guys, welcome to uh, week two of the EEC. No, sorry. <sighs> this is my first time using the uh, new overlay, so... I might make a few mishaps. Apologies for that. We got uh, Virginia Tech versus VCU. Big rivalry. Uh, two powerhouse teams we had last season. And right off the bat, we see VT banning away Dior Paris. Paris? Yeah, Dior Paris is Callista. He's been playing that a lot in solo key recently. We'll see what VCU has to reply with. <sighs> Gonna be the Riven, one of Yade's signature picks. No surprise there. He does an excellent job of carrying on that, and definitely deserves a ban. <sighs> okay, the Vagar coming out. Probably targeted against Quanzilla. Granted, Support Vagar is a thing if Crimson Rage wants to bring that out, but most likely targeting a Quanzilla in the mid. Then we also see Galio Band, that has been uh, popping up much more mid recently in both competitive and solo queue. It's a more, instead of like the previous iterations of the reworked Galio where it's basically full tank, he takes a much more AP, AP heavy route. And then we also see J4 Band. J4 just all around solid jungler right now. Considered one of the top three. There's Sejuani too, another one of the top three power pick junglers. We'll see what the two junglers resort to now. Nunu is open, and he is still powerful this patch, even after the hotfixes. We'll see what uh, Virginia Tech decides to prioritize here. And it is going to be the Nunu. Okay. Gavin has been playing the Nunu somewhat in solo queue. I'm not entirely familiar, but I'm pretty sure he can perform well on the Nunu given that Nunu isn't a very complex champion mechanically, but there is some uh, game knowledge required. VCU gonna reply with the Kog'Maw. He's been creeping up much more lately in competitive and solo queue. Probably one of the best ADCs right now. Just He has pretty decent trading in lane once he just smacks his W, and he gets a really hard spike with the Ginsu's. And Azir going to be the other pickup too. He's considered one of the top, if not the top, mid laners this patch. So, overall good solid pickups for VCU. Looks like Varus might be the reply for Fong Francis. Varus, another really popular Ginsu's, ah, Ginsu's user in the ADC role. And that is going to be the pick. We'll see what uh, Virginia Tech decides to go with here. They do have a good synergy between the Nunu and Varus. Nunu is just going to blood boil the Varus and let him auto attack like a madman. That's always nice. And we might see the Alistar come out for Joe Jacko here. Alistar, great playmaking support. Uh, after the Aftershock nerfs, it does hurt his damage. But he still has that all in power. Oh, no. Last second switch up to Nami. Nami, uh, Joe Jacko has been playing a large chunk of Nami recently in solo queue. And so no surprise to see him just go with a comfort pick here. Nami just, she has a lot of, she brings a lot, but she isn't like a master of anything. Because she does have her heal and CC, it's just, it's not the best. But still overall solid, ooh. Looks like Crimson is going to pick up the Lulu. Uh, they now have the infamous Lulu Kogma for the bot lane of VCU. That's pretty terrifying. And now we're into the second phase of bans. VCU with the first ban. We'll see what they decide to go with. We haven't seen a mid laner or top lane picked for VT. Obviously, they go with the top lane ban. And Nar, he is really popular and one of Yade's favorite champions. Okay, a Warwick ban coming out. That is uh, one of Izaru's favorite jungle champions, and the Camille too. She's been popping up a lot recently with the Comet and competitive in solo queue. Yeah. Basically, the Comet helps nullify her somewhat weak early laning phase, and she scales really well into being a split pusher and like skirmisher. 
I wouldn't say she's the best at team fights because she can get blown up real Come easily, on, but still, she's you. a really good pick. And I know a lot of coming out too that can also be a top lane ban. I'm not entirely sure if Eckhart plays a top lane, but there are top lane Olafs who go common with Q's ban. Looks like Zac will be the jungle pickup here for the side of VCU. Zac, maybe not in the top three jungles, junglers, but he is definitely up there. I'm not too familiar with uh, just jungling in general, but Zac has been popping up a lot recently. So there's definitely merits to picking him. Looks like Yada is going to pick his Irelia. Really scary what he can do on that. Granted, Eckhart does still have a counter pick, so he can get a favorable matchup. So we'll see what he decides to go with. But that is really scary because there have been many times where Yada just gets his Irelia. It's like one or two solo kills in the laning phase and he comes out with like 20 CS ahead. Then he just takes over the game. And Kasten gonna be the mid lane pickup here for Smite Infinity. We'll see how well that goes. Uh, Kasten, he did get a minor nerf in 8.2 with the minion aggro changes, because now when he presses Q, he will get minion aggro. But I don't know how much that affects his laning phase. I assume it hurts a little. But still, getting the free magic shield from Q will help with this harass coming out from Azaru since Azir does have a decent amount of range to us. And Orn could be the pickup here for VCU. Uh, also really popular. Did get some nerfs in 8.2 to his W. It's no longer unstoppable. Plus also his ulti has a longer cooldown at later ranks. If you're familiar with ultimate 40% CDR Orn, you probably recall him like using his ultimate twice in a team fight. Now he can't really do that anymore unless it's a really long team fight. I can't remember what they exactly nerfed the ulti cooldown to max rank, but it is certainly a lot longer. So yeah, players gonna be making final adjustments to their summoners and runes here before they get into game. And I'm Hello. Now yep, I'm now joined by uh, my co-caster Skylar the Royal. He was uh, busy helping with picks and bans. I was. I'm sorry I couldn't be here. Um, just a little crazy night. The schedule just got remade. Some people could do things, some people could not, and I'm here to fill in. Yep. So, uh, pretty cool. I don't know how much you've gotten into intros and stuff. Uh, uh, but yeah, this is... Yeah, I basically kind of started right as Pick and Ban started, so the intro I did was, like, really brief. Okay. So, yeah, this is a big rivalry matchup. These two teams really butted heads a lot last semester, last season. Um, and sort of continue to do so. It's kind of an interesting rivalry because uh, the the, pres the old president of Virginia Tech's League of Legends club left Virginia Tech to go to Vir Virginia Commonwealth University, VCU. And he is Quanzoa, the mid laner on VCU's uh, side. So there's a bit of a grudge there. Um, kind of yeah, just a bit. friendly rivalry. <laughs> um, Virginia Tech really just wants to show him he uh, oh, we should have stuck around. Yeah, uh, the members of VT he's A team, they didn't exactly have the best of words to say regarding it. There was uh, quite a bit of trash talk, if I recall. <laughs> Maybe a little bit, just just a little bit. Anyways, uh, here we are in the uh, their first matchup of this season, Pro potentially the only matchup, depending on if they get to play out, both teams get the playoffs or not. If they're on the same side of the bracket, or if they get the finals, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, yeah, Virginia Tech going with that new new pick. Uh, Zero and Kogma are both taken away by VC, which is a pretty smart move. Um, Virginia Tech got the Varys Nami though, which is a pretty heavily lane dominant lane. Uh, Varus on his own already wins lane pretty hard. Add the Nami to that, and it's going to be hard to compete, especially with a slightly weaker laner in Kogma. Mm -hmm. But uh, can oh, uh, go ahead. Kogma does have the protection from the Lulu, which can make it really hard for Virginia Tech's front line to get on him, especially since Virginia Tech they don't really have like the best of engage. 
There's like Yare getting a flank with Irelia or Smite getting a flank with Kasten. Or maybe there's yeah. just a Fong Francis ulti that gets to the back line. Or maybe Joe Jacka gets a good ulti. Yep. But it's like those are kind of situational engages or they're kind of dodgeable engages. I, I mean, I think the uh, way Virginia Tech's going to be playing this is not necessarily looking for that, you know, that no normal engage. They're going to be going heavily for like 1v1s. Uh, as put push pressure, play around the map really loose versus VCU. Definitely wants that, you know, five five man engage or whatever. For sure, the double teleport definitely facilitates that. Yeah. Luckily, Virginia Tech has the uh, Nami for the quick disengage or easy disengage in a lot of situations. Just got to be careful with the three and careful with the one. Uh, you're cutting out a little for me. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, some small technical difficulties on Skylar's end, but we yeah. are getting into uh, the loading screen here. Yeah, sorry about that. I don't know if you heard me. There's a, my everything lags when games start of League. Yeah. So. yeah, everybody with the shiny borders except for VT Gavin. Rather unfortunate for him. It's a new account. <laughs> We do see the unsealed spellbook Smite Orn for Eckhart. That's interesting. Yeah. Kind of actually surprising that's the only unsealed spellbook on, in this game. We've been seeing a lot of unsealed spellbooks show up in OCS and in even Solo Q, so. Yeah. Kind of interesting that's the only one in this case. And now we get into the weird pause thing. Yeah. At the start of the games. Just gonna take this opportunity to move VT. Huh? Oh, nope, that's score. Oops. Upscale it a little bit. Yeah, no, I just mainly need to move the VT logo down. Yeah, I still, uh, I still say we need, uh, Steven Spielberg to be our executive producer. Yeah. <laughs> Make it all go easy for us. There we go. Eh, that looks mostly decent. Alrighty, we do see a five-man stack coming out from VCU. I don't... Looks like they're just content staying there. They're not really pushing it. But I imagine with the double smite, they want to try to do an evade of sorts. Yeah, looks like they're all splitting away. Um, it could just be using the smite to help out Izuru a bit mm -hmm. on his first buff actually looking to go for a blue side invade get spied out by gavin yeah gavin gonna get spied out by Aurelia uh, as well gotta get some cheeky autos in on izuru i don't think much is gonna come of this but izuru gonna yep. start jungle not full health but i think it'll do fine yeah especially with the second smite coming in he'll be good to go i think yeah and can you comment on the mid lane matchup? Like, I imagine Kasten will have some trouble just due to his year's range and harass. This is actually one of Kasten's easier matchups. Really? Um, a lot of people actually take Kasten as a pretty good uh, counter matchup to his ear. Just because uh, with Kasten's reduced magic damage taken, he can shrug off a lot of the, you know, characteristic poke that his ear puts out in lane. That's true, because the Sand Soldiers do do that, do magic damage. Yeah. Also, when Azir puts up his Sand Soldiers or whatever, Kassadin can basically just toss out a um, Q at him, and there's nothing Azir can do to answer back. It's just free poke for Kassadin. Yeah, I talked about this at end champ select, but... Kassadin's leaning phase was hurt a bit with the uh, minion aggro changes, since his Q does attract minion aggro now. So maybe that might hurt the matchup. Yeah, it actually, those changes didn't hurt too many matchups compared to, um, you know, what you would expect. A lot of them didn't really sit in the middle of minions and toss out Qs anyways. They would, were more the type to uh, sit back yeah. a bit more. So, didn't actually change things as much as you might expect. Yeah, we are seeing a decent amount of trading in this bot lane. Jojaka had taken a lot of damage, but it looks like he's popped a potion and has just been using W to get back up. So nothing too much happening. Yeah, it's a, it's oh. a Nami, what can you do? 
Uh, misses the bubble, just barely. Francis takes a little bit of damage back, but... You know, it's an army, like I said. Uh, the Gavin is coming, but this might be a gank. Judge Jack has taken a lot of damage, but here comes yeah. Gavin with a snowball. The ice ball comes in, forces the flash. That's still going to be two more flashes coming out. This bubble pops, and that's first blood going over to Nunu. Really uh, good gank there by Gavin. Bops, Dior, Paris for the kill there. Yeah. Great flash from Joe Jacker to follow up and land that bubble onto him. Yeah. That's three summoners down in the bottom lane despite the fact that they gave up first blood. Yeah, and it only cost two summoners from Virginia Tech. Granted, it was both their flashes, so I imagine that might make him a bit vulnerable to Yuzaru. Yeah, but I mean, both flashes popped on the other side as well, so you're not going to see, like, flash for no flash trades in the future. Izara getting a little bit of counter jungling down into Gavin's jungle. Also dropping a deep ward by Wolves. Gonna spot out Gavin. Yeah, that's actually kind of funny. Usually when you think of Zack and Nunu, you think Zack's the ganking jungler, Nunu's the counter jungler. Um, turns out the opposite way this time around. Orn doing Orn thing, doing some damage to Aurelia. Aurelia actually gets a decent trade off in the back end. Mm -hmm. Aurelia is like one of the few like bruisers who benefited from the new press the attacks. There's she does really like attack speed, just due to her W. Yep. Spite Infinity just gets presence of mind. He's in that to uh, put off a little bit of her ass in the mid lane without too much mana cost. Who's ready for the late game cast and all of these with presence of mind? Ooh, Gavin making a return bot lane. Yeah, but flashes popped last time. Might as well do it again. Zach preparing for a gank in top lane as well. Yade's flash is down. Yeah, and Smite, uh... Doing a really good job of trading back with the Azir. They keep coming in clutch just to help him with trading. Gavin's sitting here for a decent amount of time now. Yeah. All right, this is the time. Wins the bubble. No flash to get out of that one. He gets slowed down by the various hit rain of arrows at the end. Fong Francis picks up the kill pretty quickly there. Great bubble by Joe Echo and great uh, follow up CC by the. Other two members of Virginia Tech. Yeah, Fong France is definitely happy he got that kill. Gonna just help him extend the lead because now he's gonna pick up a bunch of minions, a bunch of EXP, get free back. And that means he's sitting at about 600 gold ahead. Yeah. So. Very good. Yeah, Gavin already coming bot and netting his team two kills before six minutes. Izaro, he's gone top once and considered it again from what I've seen but hasn't really got anything. Yeah. In the mid lane, we just saw uh, Azir, or sorry, Kassin just teleported back, and he actually won the trade against Azir, even after taking a few more uh, Santo Dorados than he probably should have. Yeah. And now that he's unlocked Rift Walk, he'll uh, have a much better time of being able to uh, trade back in this lane. Yeah, now that he has Rift Walk, does that give him kill pressure over Quanzilla? Or is it just uh, more for trading? You still have to be careful, because if you go for a dive on his ear and he like, uh, shuffles you back into his turret, you basically just lose that trade. Yeah, sure. Quanzilla doesn't... No, yeah. Wait a second, Yada Yada going for the fight in the top lane against Eckhart, Nunu running up, just force the flash out of Eckhart, and then the ultimate to follow up. Um, Yada did that despite tanking about seven turrets, it seemed like, in the middle of that. Uh, yeah. Comes out for the better. Oh, Fong France is gonna eat up a lot of damage here. A little bit, but yeah, gotta watch out. Crimson Rage is really low. Has to pop the stopwatch here. Fong France is trading back onto uh, Kog'Maw, but he's going to go for the kill now onto Lulu. Just one kill. That's out of from Joe Jacko to secure it. Yeah, really good bubble there by Joe Jacko to stop the aggression and let the bot lane of VT just turn on them and pick up another kill. Yeah, great uh, reaction to the gank from the Zac and the uh, Azir. We see Zack actually continue to go for it, despite the fact that Azir turned around. Now Zack's taking a ton of damage underneath that turret. He's going to go down, at least his passive is going to get fucked. Uh, this might be a forced teleport from Eckhart to keep that alive. Actually, the rest of the team going aggressive. They're going to keep him alive through that. The shuffle misses. They're still going to do a decent amount of damage to Fong Francis. Fong Francis has to run away, but Cassidy and Tiano, he's going to be able to do some damage. Aurelia teleports in, gets the kill into Kog'Maw. Zack goes down to Cassidy on the other end, and Azir is the only one to get away. That's an absolute disaster for VCU. They committed three or two extra members bot lane, and Azara just went in way too early and had no one to back him up. Forced to pop the stopwatch early and then just goes into passive. And then all the members of VT are just able to react and clean up. 
Yeah, exactly like you said. There's a little bit of disconnect there on Izaru going in while Ponzo was backing out. Uh, not quite the correct amount of communication needed to yeah. pull that off. Plus, also, Yade did have a good TP, whereas Eckhart didn't choose to TP. Yeah, Eckhart could have teleported onto the Zac blobs even, um, and guaranteed that survival. Yeah. But he just chose not to teleport at all. Doesn't even get any turret damage for it, really, on the top side. Maybe a little bit, but... Uh, he already had some of that down in the first place. Yeah. We'll see how uh, VCU rebounds from that, because that has an added Virginia Tech that 3k gold lead, and 3k gold lead this early is kind of big. Maybe not the biggest deal. Let's... Yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty decent. Um, especially when you have the, like, you know, when you go for Nunu, you're not going for the early game domination. You're going for the late game scaling, sort of. Um, at least not with the Nunu now. Um, there used to be old Nunus the way you could, you know, go for a fast push or something, but that's not how it works right now. Yeah, or um, the old counter jungle Nunu. Yeah, I mean, he still counter jungles really well, it's just... Yeah, uh, it's just the nerf counter jungle. I mean, that's, that's I basically know. just setting up for later in the game, it's not a huge thing. Um... But yeah, no, this is uh, Nunu that's up right now, his bot lane's up right now, uh, and his bot lane actually has 100% kill participation. So they're very ahead. Uh, we actually see Fong Friends is 1,000 ahead of Dior Paris right now, in a lane that uh, has pretty similar scaling. Kog'Maw scales uh, a little bit better than Varus, just because he has longer auto attack range. Right? But um, because uh, actually, yada yada, going for the kill on Eckhart here, Eckhart has to E out, pops a stopwatch, but there's still an ult charge left for Yada, and he does get the kill there. Well, that's yeah. a solo kill for Yada. He's now 2-0. and oh. I was kind of talking about this in champ select, where when Yada plays Irelia, it just kind of happens where all of a sudden he gets like two solo kills in lane, and he's up in CS, and then he just takes over the game. So we might yeah. be seeing that this game. Yeah, this is a pretty standard Yada in the EEC game. Um... But yeah, as I was saying before, Ferris and Kogma basically build the exact same thing. Um, and go into late game with Kogma basically having a better auto range, but no snare on his ultimate or whatever. Yeah. Whereas uh, Varus this time will have Ninu. So even that scaling or whatever, Varus can put out more damage than Kogma in some situations. Mm -hmm. and if you look at the vision for both teams... Uh... It's kind of sparse, except for in the river, but we do see a ward in the try where Izaro might come and gank Yade. But with this lack of vision, do you think it makes Izaro that much more deadly? Oh. oh, one second. Oh, we do see a fight going on. Do our pairs dig it? I had to flash away from the wall, actually. Barely didn't get caught by that, but that's a flash burned. Bonkrant is still going a little aggressive here. Yep. Forcing out yeah. the flash from Dior Paris, pretty good there. Yeah, no, this is just the aggression you expect from a Varus Nami lane. These are two of the champions that win lane pretty much the hardest, especially in the current meta. Yeah, going back to that vision point, if you look around topside for VC you now, there is just vision littered all over for that card, so... Yeah, actually we see Zac come in for the gank onto Falling Prince, he does get knocked back. The Ultimates come in and misses a little bit, and now they just don't have anything left to continue pushing forward. And great gank of wins. Even if it costs three summoners, nobody died. On the side of Virginia Tech. Yada, you got a meanwhile, going for another fight with Eckhart in the top lane. Oh, and actually, Smite Finney's going for the kill onto Quanzoa. Quanzoa does use the stream of shuffle. Barely gets out with his life. Barely, yeah. What's his, it's, his ultimate is like Emperor's Divide, right? Yeah, I just forgot that, so I keep calling it a shuffle. It's not really a shuffle if there's no drifting, so. I guess I should make that clear. I don't know, to me the stream of shuffle is if you just E and then Q while doing it for the long one. Not if you do that uh, back. I always consider it has to be with the uh... Ulti, uh, the uh, ulti. Anyways, Yadi Yadi actually taking some damage here from Eckhart, and Eckhart takes him down in the top lane. Yeah, maybe a little too cocky there from Yade. Because uh, Eckhart does now have the Tabai and Bramble Vest, which helps a lot versus Irelia, who has to auto attack you for a lot of her DPS, not to mention gets a lot of healing from her W. So just having that just kind of like hurts her for doing what she does best. Yeah. I, 
Gotti actually has a slight CS, yes, uh... What is the word? Lead? Deficit. 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 That's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. Not used to saying deficit and VT in the same sentence, huh? No, <laughs> not really. Uh, no, but... He still has the kill lead. Is up about 200 gold. Mm -hmm. So he's good there. Meanwhile, huge CS leads in the other three lanes. Yeah. Bot lane, we already see Fong Francis has the Ginsus, so that just gives him a lot of lane pressure over Dior pairs here. Yeah, finishing that 1300 gold ahead of your opponent uh, is pretty big. Yeah. Because that's, that Ginsus is such a huge power spike now um, that it, it's basically. The way most people think about AD carries is like, oh, Kog'Maw is a super late game scaling champion. But that's not really true the way current itemization works, because you go for, you know, Gwyn Tzu's Wits End, Runans or something. Yeah. Um, like which has no... It, it Basically, you have the attack speed and you have unhit. But you, there's no, like, multiplicative scaling there. Like, most AD carries will go, you know, Infinity Edge, Crit, Crit, Attack Speed, Damage, Crit, etc. And all those stats multiply together. So that's actually a better late game build. Which is something these the two bot lane carries we see this game don't have. Yeah. Um, so these two champions actually spike in the mid game, um, which basically means that that one item spike is huge for these characters. Missed ulti from Fong Francis, but they are still going to oh, get the top ten. God is actually in the back line already. Dior Paris goes down instantly to Kogma, or sorry, Cassidy getting into the back line. Dior Paris or Yada Yada continues to dive. Smite gets a double kill. Could be a triple. Killing this, uh, these Aquabs. They are under tower. Actually, BT Gavin steals it. Yada Yada has to watch out here. He does get hit by the Enter's Divide, but now Quantil comes in. He's going to finish him off, even though Yada Yada does sacrifice himself. Mm -hmm. Sort of. To go down. Um, meanwhile, that's first tower going down to Virginia Tech, and probably second tower here, too. Yeah, Eckhart. Four dead on the side of ECU. Eckhart gonna reply with this top lane tower. He did have TP there, although it might have already just been a losing battle, so he just decided to push. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think when you TP into your own tower, it's hard for it to be a losing battle. Yeah. Um, I was just thinking because Zara went into pops there, that being maybe when he TPs, but I was also thinking that you know, by then it was already a lost fight. Yeah. Exactly. Um, could be. I mean, he could have seen uh, Yade teleporting and we responded with his own teleport, though, at the same time. My Infinity caught out a little bit here, does get hit by the Lulu Polymorph, but has the Rift Block, gets away. Probably wants to go back and spend that 2,000 gold he has in his inventory, in his inventory, rather. Anyways. Yeah, what do you think the next item for Smite is gonna be? Uh, Lush Bane? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I don't know. I'm not too familiar with Oh, nope, nope, I'm wrong. <laughs> it's a Medjaz. <laughs> well, he is 4 0 and 2, so he has the KDA to back that up. Yeah, no, he, he has already the 10 stacks on the Dark Seal. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, Medjai's a little, little confident there, but he can do it. And I and I was right, the Sheen does come out for the uh, bitch Bane after that. He's going to have to be careful, though, since that is really snowball-y. If he goes in too early and Crimson Rage is pulling more stuff, that can be a very easy shutdown for VC again. It's pretty crucial goals. The other guy here actually goes for the attack under turret with no minions, but forces out the ultimate from Eckhart. Yeah, Eckhart just protecting his mid laner. Yada yada, he does pop the ultimate this time. He's going in for real this time. So Infinity going to chase down Quan Zill. He takes him down, and the under the tower, Izuru is going to be the next target of the rest of the team. And Yada yada and Smite Infinity do finish off Izuru. Or sorry, Eckhart on the other side. Yep. And that's going to be another turret for Virginia Tech with a five man dive on top side. Yep, five man top side. Dior Paris currently pushing bot, unable to help out sadly. Looks like he's yeah. gonna just try and aim to get that bot tower, cause VC is probably calling that they can't defend the center turret top lane. Yep, it's going to be a uh, two turrets actually for Virginia Tech, and zero turrets for VCU from that trade. Uh, Plus, yeah. you know the uh, additional four people dead, or is it three people dead? I don't think Lily died that time. No, Crimson Rage didn't die. It was just the uh, three Gonzales yeah. are in a cart. But Dior is not gonna get this. Meanwhile, Virginia Tech picks up another objective across the map in the Rift Herald. Yeah, and just after spending 2,000 gold, Fight Infinity has another 1,500 he can spend. Uh, so and that's gonna be a finish Lich Bane pretty quick. And 18 stacks. Oh yeah, 18 stacks. Also helpful. How much AP is he at right now? 
Uh, it would be 218. It's kind of scary for just 18 minutes. Yeah, it's a pretty large amount. Uh, it's actually, with the new new buff, because that's important. He has 298. Oh, baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so... I, I want to make... All right, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think Rod of Ages or Magi's will be stacked to maximum first? Mm, if fights keep going like they will, Magi's, if this game gets a bit more calm and we just see more, like, objective control, probably the Rod. Yeah, but they're, like, they're pushing on an inhib turret here in a second. Yeah. So, BC is, like, 11k down right now. Like, how do you see them yeah. coming back into this game or at least stabilizing it? Alright, so they need to... It's going to be hard because they need to sort of fight for a late game where the other team has Nunu. Um, which is not something you need. What you should definitely do is like, look for those isolated members. Like you right here, you see Yada Yada and 20 Infinity instantly killing your Paris. If they were ready, they could have had Zack kind of engage on that. Yeah. Use their hard engage to get the kills there, but they just were not ready. And your Paris goes down and basically guaranteed in hip turret mid with the rift held. Because if these two teams are even, if a five on, in a five on five, I would give the edge to VCU just from their comp alone. Because Azara has a lot more access to the backline than Gavin. And yeah, those exactly. two are going to be the ones tanking up damage. Yeah, basically against Virginia Tech's comp, you want to make it uh, a thing where all five people are in the same lane and it's hard for Virginia Tech to get onto the backline. Um, if <laughs> missed ultimate there from Funk Francis, he gets pulled in by the Zag. Zag's going to try to ulti in. He does actually ulti in the casting. Casting goes down. That's going to be. Whip to the Medjai stacks, he's down to 10. That's the team coming in. Eckhart does actually huge bow from Jojako. Yada yada, the next target for BCU. They're going to go for him. Exhaust comes out, that's a lot more damage coming in. Yada yada goes down. That's another huge bow from Jojako, though, and that's going to pretty much secure the disengage. And this Eckhart really pushes it. We'll see if they can. Lulu does have speed, but so does Nami. Yeah, I don't think they can catch up to this, but good turnaround there from BCU. Catching out BT a little cocky. Smite uh, down to only 10 stacks on his Magi's now. Yep. What's that uh, Negatron Cloak gonna be for Quanzilla? Sorry, uh, your Negatron. Abyssal Mask? That's what I'm thinking? Abyssal Mask is the only thing that an AP champion would want to build out of that. Uh. Yeah. I think you can build, like. Uh, Jrot portal with it? Is ZC Rot? Yeah. Oh, I'm forgetting. But I mean, like, I, I don't think, like, you want to. <laughs> yeah, or, so. well, there's Gargoyle Stoneflake, but he's not getting that. Yeah, um, basically the magic resist items that you see most APs by don't build out of Negatron anymore. There's, uh, Merc Treads and there's Banshee's Hail. Both of those build off of just the no magic mantle. Uh, no Negatron needed. And now we see a War for Vision. Looks like both teams won. Aiming to look at Baron. Do you uh, think... Machine Tech has the advantage of the inhibitor being down in mid lane, though. Do you think the it's the better call to go for the Abyssal Mask here, or for something a bit more offensive, like a... Oh god, it's on the tip of my tongue. Banshees, yeah. Uh, well, there's no, like, intense CC he needs to dodge out as we watch my Infinity. Just kind of go for this OK on Crimson Range, but he does have to... Retreat after the rest of the team comes in. As now the team fight spread out though. Eckhart caught all alone on the bottom side of the team fight. He's going to go down here to Funk Francis. Hey, Nunu buff. Nunu pops an ultimate in the middle of the enemy team. We see Kogma trying his darndest to do as much damage as he can. Israel actually gets out. Swanny Finney goes for the kill onto the RPS and he does get it in the end. Good team fight there from Virginia Tech and they could aim to end this right now. They have Super Means pushing in with a Nunu buffed Varus mm -hmm. coming out. Yeah, imagine this is the end of game one here. Yep, and that's a pretty dominant game one from Virginia Tech. Actually, Izuru does get a pretty good engage onto Virginia Tech. But DT Ga BT Gavin goes down. 2020 is still alive, though. He's going aim to maybe do some damage to Guanzilla here. Guanzilla actually just shuffles his way towards the fountain. Yeah, Izaru with a nice engage there, but sadly, he's down two men. It's multi. Yeah, Smite Infinity actually really low on HP here. DRP has just respawned. He's going to try to do his. Much damage he can. He takes out Yada Yada. Smite Infinity pretty low here. Funk is going to have to back off. They do get the Nexus turret. That's an open Nexus, but not enough power left to end the game. So, that does halt Virginia Tech for a little bit, giving VC some breather room. 
Yep. So what do you uh, think Tech is looking for here now? Perhaps the Baron, or maybe just use the mid-pressure to siege top? I mean, Tech has a basically really fluid comp when they're this far ahead. They have a 13,000 gold lead, so they can basically take 1v2s in a lot of situations. Mm -hmm. um, and if you have like something like uh, Cassidy and Aurelia in the same lane, you better be scared, because those things will instantly kill you. Uh, sure. Basically, you're going to want to watch for... Um, you're going to want to basically use five people in the best lane possible, put as much pressure in that place as possible, um, and probably hard engage the second you see one or two people. Because you're basically going to need a series of picks, like probably five or six in a row, <laughs> in order to win this game for VCU. So it looks like Baron is the call here for Virginia Tech, just to envision for now. VCU does know this is going on. Yep. Oh, Cassidy misplayed that a little bit. His Q does interrupt. He could have interrupted the Zack jump if he went for that first instead. Uh, Virginia yeah. Tech going for Baron is spotted by VCU and the control ward. Is you going to jump in but gets interrupted by the Nami ultimate. Oh my play god, play and that's my opinion, just instantly kills some people. Izuru going down now to yada yada and uh, Cassidy. And he actually sacrifices himself to save Dior Paris. Send the rest of them away. Dior Paris gonna get slowed down by Nunu here. Apparently, the ultimate comes out and Emperor's Divide, but the Varus snared Azir beforehand, snares Eckhart as well. He's gonna get away in time. Now Cassidy's using that presence of mind to try to chase down Dior Paris. There's one more ultimate charge before he runs down mana. Yep, and that's a kill. And he can just ulti away. I uh, need no ultimate to slow down the Kog'Maw passive. That's not how that works, but good attempt, good attempt. Uh, uh you know, tech, just end in the game. Gavin uh, ulted there. It was for CS, not the Kog'Maw ulti. He's got a pass. Oh, right, right, right. It's not a, not a complete enough win unless you're 50 CS.